Bukit Maju. Thank you, Lord. The Lord be with you. Let's all gather together. Find a seat. I think there's a couple open. And you'll be good. But let's gather together and worship the Lord. We want to lift his name this morning. So Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Even now, Father, as people are still arriving, Father, pour out your spirit upon us. We exalt your name this morning. We lift your name this morning. For you alone are worthy. You alone are holy, Father. We praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. From heaven's throne you came to us and set your heart upon the cross. We'll never know the sacrifice you made. Yes, Lord. For all our sin and all our shame, you took the nails and took our place. No one else could do what you have done. Oh, one name is higher, one name is stronger than any grave, than any throne. Christ exalted over all. From head to grave where death would die, you rose again and brought us life. You're reigning now, the Savior of the world. Yes, Lord. You're reigning now, the Savior of the world. One, One name is stronger than any grave, than any throne. Christ exalted over all, the only Savior, Jesus Messiah, to you alone, all praise belongs, Christ exalted over all, we'll sing your praise. We'll sing your praise, we'll sing your praise forever, and lift your name, we lift your name, Jesus over all. We'll sing your praise, we'll sing your praise, we'll sing your praise forever, and lift your name, we lift your name, Jesus over all. One name is higher, one name is stronger than any grave, than any throne. Christ exalted over all, the only Savior, Jesus Messiah. To you alone our praise belongs. Christ exalted over all, to you alone our praise belongs, Christ exalted over all. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. We exalt your name, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. I will make you a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let's pray the collect of purity together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the heart of our mission and vision for the church. In the summary of the law, hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. your spirit. Let's pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, keep your household, the church, continually in your true religion, that we who trust in the hope of your heavenly grace may always be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I love a, a good collect. You may nev have never thought that thought before, but when you get a collect for the day like that, uh, you, ha you have to stop and say, keep me in your true religion. I thought we were supposed to pray against religious spirits. <laughs> but um, when we pray that aloud, we pray, keep us in your true religion. We're saying, Lord, help us to stay kingdom-minded. Uh, we're so distracted by all the things that are going on in the world right now that we need to stay focused on his kingdom and making a difference in presenting his kingdom to the world. So let's stay focused there. Today is Mission Sunday uh, in the Anglican uh, calendar, and uh, Joni Lynch is going to be with us sharing the word today, and uh, we're excited about that. Um, I, I wanted to ask Jim, Jim, do you want to come and make a plug for... Uh, Jim, come on forward. Um, Jim has, uh, has written a book, and it's apropos for our time. Um, and I, th I just want to let you make an announcement about okay. what you got uh, going, because there's, there's some books that are on sale and, and uh, others that have a new fangled cover on it and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So let us know what's yeah, going thanks. on there. Thanks, uh, mm -hmm. Father Dan. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I've got uh, two printings of the book now. Uh, this is the original printing, and I've still got a few left, and uh, I want to uh, give those to people for uh, on sale for ten dollars. Uh, it, it normally was fifteen dollars, just for about a week. Okay, so those of you who are here and those of you who are watching, um, here's this book for for a week for ten dollars. Now this is the new the newer uh, printing. Uh, you can see that it's uh, the, the cover's better. The formatting is also much better. It looks more like uh, uh, a book <laughs> now. And, and this is for $15, this one, uh, the same price. Uh, now, if, if you uh, want to get the book on Amazon, it's, uh, you can now get it on Amazon, but it's $19.95 plus $4 shipping. So uh, this is a good deal, I think, uh, for the people of uh, St. Luke's for the next week or so, okay? Awesome. And, and can, they, can they contact you about Sure, that? they can or contact they, you can the contact church. contact me. Certainly, or, yeah, or, or, they, or they can call you direct, either way. Father Dan has uh, uh, 10 copies, I think, of, yes, of, I do. The, of this one, and I can leave you a couple of these also. Awesome. Okay. I, ha I have at least 10 copies of the, of the original. So. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, it, the, the book is, th thanks very much for that. Yeah. The book is called Nations Are God's Idea, and I think all of you know that there's a, there's a, a gigantic move uh, today uh, to centralize government, not just in nations, but, um, around, uh, but, but a worldwide 
Uh, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is, uh, this is actually uh, true. That, and, and so what, what this book does is it, it, it tells you how this is happening. Some of the, these things that are being pushed in our country and around the world, um, the, the, these, this, these are the ways that, um, that, they, they, that people, that an elite group intend to bring um, world government uh, to us. And so I identify that and then I, and, and each of the issues, and let me, let me tell you about some of the issues, uh, the issues that I deal with uh, that are manipulated um, by these elite people are climate, gender, um, immigration, poverty, property, private property is on the way out if, if these people get control, uh, and race. These are all being manipulated mm -hmm. and weaponized uh, in order to bring this uh, world, world government in. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing, it's not a conspiracy. They're all identified and then I, what, what I do is show you what God's position is on all of these issues and you'll see that they are quite contrary to what the world is, is telling us. Thank you very much for asking me to do that. Thanks, Thank Jim. You. You'll be around in the cafe afterward for a little while, Jim? Excellent. A um, few announcements. Tomorrow, uh, February 8th, all the carpets downstairs are being cleaned. We discovered that they haven't been cleaned in quite a while, and we're trying to eradicate any uh, smell of, of mold and must downstairs. So we need some volunteers to help us move furniture. If you can come, please contact Jim at the uh, church office or call him on his cell phone and let him know. We're going to provide lunch. We just have to sort of shift things around as the as the uh, carpet cleaners will go through and, and clean the stuff downstairs. So uh, we're going to be there from 9 to 5. So any time that you can come during the day tomorrow would be helpful. Um, as we uh, want to make an effort to keep each other connected, growing fellowship and, and giftings and our love for one another, home groups, men group, men's groups, women's groups are some of the ways, house groups, house churches are some of the ways that we gather uh, either in person or online, and it's happening all over the place right now, and we want to encourage one another. The problem is we, we've lost touch with exactly what groups are meeting where, and we want to know whether to list those groups for people to be able to join. Uh, and, and know a little bit more about your group so we can identify the groups that we have. Um, so if you're currently meeting in a group um, and you know that there's some new people among us that we can point in your direction, let us know whether or not they're, you're open to new people coming. Uh, call Jim and let him know. Call me and let me know so we can s come up with a list. We'll come up with a list and start publishing that. And if you're missing, it's not because we're particularly uh, not wanting to list you. We, we may have either forgotten or, or just not gotten the information that you have a group that's meeting. So uh, call us and let us know so that we can help people find an opportunity. Um, we're still collecting change and, and bills through the uh, Baby Bottle Boomerang fundraiser for um, uh, Akron uh, Pregnancy Services. So if you have time and you haven't gotten an empty bottle and you would like to fill a bottle with your change from home, or to put some cash in it or a check and bring it back. We're making that collection next Sunday. Uh, so please grab an empty baby bottle off the cafe counter and uh, fill it and bring it back and let us help us uh, bless the ministry of APS. Um, we're still collecting uh, coats, blankets, tents, hats, socks, tarps, long underwear, and more uh, for one more week to help the Peter Morin Center. I wish that... Um, that uh, Cynthia was here this morning, but maybe next week I'll have Cynthia come up and share. She's in the back. She's taking care of kids. Um, uh, she, she just had a wonderful testimony about how uh, the folks at the Peter Morin Center have been blessed and how blessed she is at your generosity. Um, she's taken a load over. I know Nancy's taken a load over to the Peter Morin Center. And uh, you folks are so generous. I mean, you, you bought brand new blankets and brand new coats and brand new sleeping bags. And uh, the generosity has been overwhelming that when she went, um, they, they were just really, really blessed. So I'll let her give that testimony maybe next week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
That's awesome. Cool, cool. Um, just wanted to let you know that on February 17th, we will have our Ash Wednesday service. So just like during Holy Week, all of our service offerings are at 7 o'clock. There'll be a service at 7 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, the 17th of February, uh, to start the beginning of Lent. Uh, it's a, Lent is an opportunity for us to, to take time to draw closer to the Lord. Uh, I'd encourage you to think about um, the things that, that you need to take to him in repentance, uh, things that you might fast from. I, I believe it's just not just a season. We always sort of in the church have used it as a season of letting go of something. What am I going to give up for Lent? Oh, well, we'll give up chocolate again or wh whatever. Um, but really, it's also a season of taking on a habit. It doesn't have to be letting go of something. It just doesn't have to be one of those things where it's, it, it's doing something purposeful to get our focus on the Lord on a daily basis that's going to remind us and get us dialed in uh, so that we can focus on the things that separate us from the Lord as we prepare for Easter. And um, there are, are uh, guides that are available on the welcome board, and we are um, going to be using during the season of Lent. We have copies of these. Jim, are they out in the cafe? Copies of these books. They're on the bulletin board, on the welcome board. They're on the welcome board. This is a program that I've seen for years. I got an email recently from... Um, Margo, Margo, uh, and she said that uh, she was curious whether we might want to do this as a church. It's called Seeking God for the City, and it's an organization that has put together uh, a Lenten discipline of praying for your city, and I just thought, what a great opportunity for the church to be praying for our area, to, to, the, to uh, every day be seeking God to come and invade the hearts and lives of people throughout the greater Akron area. So we have 50 copies of these. These are available online as well if you want to uh, dial them down as a um, digital copy. They begin on Ash Wednesday and they take you through the whole season of Lent. It's 40 days that you can do. And it's, it's got great information in here and uh, you can go further if you want to look at the context in which the scriptures come from, uh, but it's a great devotional to use during Lent. Um, we also will give you some resources during Lent that you can use. Um, we know of some really good um, devotionals that are out there that are easy to pick up online, and we'll, we'll post those on the website. Um, if everyone, I pray, has received your access to the directory app, you can, um, if you haven't, call the church office. Jim will hook you up with that so that you can have the app for your phone or for your iPad so that you can get the church directory. So you can also have access to any events that are happening, announcements that are going on. All of those things are available. Even your online giving. You can, you can shift to online giving if you'd prefer, and there's an easy way to do that linked up there. Or you can call the office and have it regularly taken out of your bank account. Uh, and Kathy would be glad to help you with that. <laughs> um, uh, new ministry schedules have been put up for February uh, through, uh, the, the, through May of 2021, which we're in. It's hard to believe that 2020 is finally over. Let's hope that 2021 is going to be a, a lot more freeing. Um, those schedules have been sent out for liturgical stuff, music, media, uh, if you did not receive that and you're on those lists, let Jim know and he'll fill you in. Last but not least, we have uh, children back in church. Thank you, Lord. And uh, there's even a baby here in the back row over there. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Baby Joshua. Yeah, well, David's a baby too, but, you know, I'm kidding. Big baby. I'm a big baby too, so no, no, no big deal. Um, but we have children back, and uh, we have teams that are starting to help care for the children, but we want to expand into offering Sunday school for the older kids. Uh, so if you would like to help in those areas, um, please call the church office and let us know, we'll, or call Penny, actually, Penny Uhlenbrock, if you uh, would uh, give her your name so we can get you on a schedule for helping for at least child care, which we're offering right now. Um, we'll get to a place where we can open Sunday school back up. And as the numbers come down and the, uh, the immunizations go up, 
uh, we will be freer and freer and hopefully we'll be able to minister to new folks on a regular basis. So um, we're glad that we can do that, but we need you. Um, so if you are able-bodied and willing to give up one Sunday every other month or one Sunday a month to help in the, uh, with uh, Sunday school or child care, it would help significantly. Here endeth the announcements. Bless you. Let, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Let's stand together and continue our worship this morning. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Holy, holy, God Almighty, who was and is to come. God of glory, you're so worthy. All the saints bow down. Holy, holy God. Holy, holy, God Almighty, who was and is to come. God of glory. You're so worthy, all the saints bow down. Holy is your name in all the earth. Righteous are your ways, so merciful. Everything you've done is just and true. Holy, holy God are you. Holy, holy God. Holy, holy, God Almighty, who was and is to come. God of glory, you're so worthy, all the saints bow down. Holy is your name in all the earth, righteous are your ways, so merciful. Everything you've done is just and true. Holy, holy God are you. Holy is your name in all the earth. Righteous are your ways, so merciful. Everything you've done is just and true. Holy, holy God are you. Holy, holy God. All blessing, all honor belongs to you all power all wisdom is yours all blessing all honor belongs to you all power all wisdom is yours holy is your name in all the earth righteous are your way so merciful everything you've done is just and true holy holy god are you holy is your name in all the earth righteous are your way so merciful everything you've done is just and true holy holy god are you 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 holy are you lord thank you. holy are you jesus thank you father praise you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah jesus praise you lord we bless you, Father. We praise your name, Father God. We worship you, Lord. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child 
of God. Yes, Lord. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of of God. God. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord God. Thank you that we are your children, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We bless you, God. Hallelujah, Father Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, God. We thank you that we are your children, Lord. And we are free from fear, Father. We exalt your name, Father, for you are holy, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night when you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're, you're a, a good, good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I see many searching for answers far and wide. I know we're all searching for answers. Answers only you provide Cause you know just what we need Before we say our word You're a good, good father 
Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To prophecy and all that uh, before I even before he was even done with his sermon I felt like the Lord had a word that he wanted me to speak for today and we also had a word last week about being undone and the Lord spoke to me and says even though you feel like you're undone we're not done And for, as I told you before, for the last 24 years, I've been praying for this country. And I wouldn't have had to pray for it for 24 years if I thought he was going to destroy it. And he doesn't want to destroy it. He wants to see us fulfill the destiny that he and the Father had for it from the beginning of time. Yes, Lord. He's been doing a work in me for the last 24 years. <laughs> to, and he Every told me. Wine takes time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was a young Christian. I just got filled with the Spirit, there too. So he's, he's, done, he, he's done a lot through me and everything. Mm. But he's not looking to destroy it. He's looking for us to go forward and move forward. And what he, what he wants 
and what he needs. We, we need a church like the New Testament church. Mm -hmm. We need a church that works in kingdom power, resurrection power. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way that can happen, something's got to die. He can't raise the living, he raises the dead. And the thing we need to give up to see the resurrected country that he wants us to have is to give up the old. The old has got to die. <laughs> we have no idea where he's going with this. We, I mean, he didn't want slavery, obviously, in a constitution that was in there. So. We don't know what's going. Political parties might disappear. Who knows? But I know he wants to come in. He wants to use kingdom powers Amen. to beat back the evil and the darkness. That's mm. what he's been preparing, preparing me for is all that. And he also told me that we're going to relive the wounds of the Civil War. And I never thought in my lifetime that it had been this bad, that we get this close, but it seems like we're headed down the same rabbit hole that we were back then, mm -hmm. that we're looking for a, uh, just a move of God, a revival or whatever, and a revival just wakes up that that's asleep. Yeah. We need something that'll raise the dead. Amen. That's basically it. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. If you just didn't get the heart of it, the Lord's been stirring in me, and I can affirm that word, John, that God's establishing something new. There, there's, a, there's a new thing that he's, he's, he's bringing us out of and putting us into, and we just amen. have to keep our hearts prepared and keep focused on him. So, amen, amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. Good morning. The reading today is from the second book of Kings, chapter 4. The screen is showing verses 8 to 21 and verses 32 to 37. Dan has graciously allowed me to read the entire section without that gap. And he has also graciously acceded to my reading this, not from the ESV, which we usually use, but from the complete Jewish Bible. I will, however, as I read, be changing some of the Jewish terms into English and the Jewish names into English. One day, Elisha visited Shunem, and a well-to-do woman, woman living there pressed him to stay and eat a meal. After this, whenever he came through, he stopped there for a meal. She said to her husband, I can see that this is a holy man of God who comes to visit us. He stops, keeps stopping at our place. Please, let's build him a little room on the roof. We'll put a bed and a table in it for him, and a stool and a candlestick, and then whenever he comes to visit us, he can stay there. 
One day Elisha came to visit there, and he went into the upper room to lie down. He said to Gashi, his servant, call the Shumanite. He called her, and when she arrived, he said to him, tell her this, you have shown us so much hospitality, what can I do to show my appreciation? Do you, want to, do you want me to say anything to the king for you or to the commander of the army? She answered, I'm happy living as I do among my own people. He said, what then is there to be done for her? And Yeshe answered, there's one thing she doesn't have a son, and her husband is old. Elisha said, call her. After he called her, she stood in the door. He said, next year, when this season comes around, you will be holding a son. No way, my lord, she answered, man of God, don't lie to me. But the woman conceived and gave birth to a son the following year. When the season came around, just as Elisha had said to her. When the child was old enough, he went out one day to be with his father, who was with the reapers. Suddenly, he cried out to his father, my head, my head hurts. He said to his servant, carry him back to his mother. When he had taken in and brought him to his mother, he lay on her lap until about noon. And then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door on him, and went out. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants with a donkey. I must get to the man of God as fast as I can. I'll come straight back. He asked, why are you going to him today? It isn't the first of the month, and it isn't the holy day. So she said, it's all right. Then she saddled the donkey and ordered her servant. Drive as fast as you can. Don't slow down for me unless I say so. She set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her in the distance, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, here comes that Shunammite. Run now to meet her and ask her, Is everything all right with you, with your husband, with the child? She answered, Everything is all right. But when she reached the man of God on the hill, she grabbed his feet. Gichasi came up to push her away. But the man of God said, leave her alone. She is in great distress. But Adonai has hidden from me what it is. He hasn't told me. Then she said, did I ask for a son? Didn't I say not to deceive me? Then Elisha said to Gehazi, get dressed for action, take up my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, don't greet him. If anyone greets you, don't answer and lay my staff on the child's face. The mother of the child said, as Pat and I lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. He got up and followed her. Gichazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the child's face. But there was no sound or sign of life. So he went back to Elisha and told him, the child didn't wake up. When Elisha reached the house, there the child was dead and laid on the bed. He went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed 
to the Lord. Then he got up on the bed and lay on top of the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child. His flesh began to grow warm. Then he went down, walked around the house a while, went back up and stretched himself out on the child again. The child sneezed seven times, then opened his eyes. Elisha called Gachasi and said, call the Shunammite. So he called her, and when she came to him, he said, pick up your son. She entered fell at his feet and prostrated herself on the floor. Then she picked up her son and went out. This is the word of the Lord. Before the psalm is read, I just got to ask this one question. John, did you know that that was the Old Testament reading today? <laughs> did you know that that was going to be the Old Testament reading today? Yeah. Yeah. How powerful is that that the Lord's given him that same message that he's going to raise the dead and that that was today's lesson. Amen. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 142. With my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson for today is from 1 Corinthians 9, verses 16 through 23. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching, I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. 
This is the word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came up and took her by the hand and lifted her, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went to a desolate place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came. And he went through all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I'm going to ask Joni to come on up. Um, she's going to share with us uh, what the Lord's put on her heart and about her ministry. She's, uh, as, as far as we know, she's getting ready to go back soon, sometime in March, Joni, is that it? Yay. So I'm going to pray for her and, and let God speak uh, today as he will through her. Yes, there's a... Father, we just thank you. Thank you for Joni. Thank you for her witness uh, to you and for her love to shine your light through her for the sake of the world. And we thank you for her call to Ukraine. And we ask, Lord, your blessing on her today as uh, she shares with us parts of her journey and the ways that you've been speaking and working through her. And we pray, Lord, that you would um, speak to our hearts by your Holy Spirit as she speaks, that we might leave here transformed. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him heaven. <laughs> this is really, really, really nice to be here. I can't tell you. Okay, I'm getting closer to the mic. This is very, very, very nice to be here. And looky, there's the live the stream. I don't think I've ever been on TV before. So, hey everybody, hi out there. I think, because there are people watching on the live stream. So hello out there, and um, I'm uh, just going to start with a simple song that you guys might remember. This, you know, I've I been a worship leader a long time, so uh, since 1974. Some of you might remember this old song. I felt led by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Let's see. See if you remember. In your presence, in your presence, there is peace. In your presence, in your presence, you remember, there is joy. I will linger, I will stay. In day by day till your likeness may be seen in me let's try that again <coughs> in your presence in your presence there is peace in your presence in your presence, there is joy. I will linger, I will stay in your presence day by 
Anybody remember that? Remember that song? I think it was about 1976, 78. Probably. Yeah. I, um, I used to memorize all the years that all the songs were written. And then when I learned Russian, it displaced a lot of that knowledge. So no. <laughs> but um, just on that note, I just have to tell you, um, the Lord's presence is what keeps us. I've been through a lot. You guys know I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. And, um, you know, whether you're dodging bombs in Kabul or you're in the heat of this hyper-accelerated revival in Ukraine or you're watching your beloved slip into eternity, the presence of the Lord keeps us. It doesn't matter what happens. It really doesn't matter what happens. The presence of the Lord is keeping us. Amen? Amen? The presence of the Lord is with us every day. The presence of the Lord greets us in the morning. His mercies are new every morning. We wake up to the presence of the Lord. I was waking up um, those terrible months uh, when Bill was dying, and I would, have a, I would wake up to a song, and these songs were carrying me. And the Holy Spirit is alive today, and he is strong, and he is, he, is, he is strong in the earth today. The Lord is at work. The Lord is at work. And um, don't, get, don't be confused by any of the propaganda. The love of God is still the most powerful force in the entire universe. The love of God is strong. The love of God is in you. Don't give up on loving. Um, I'm supposed to say that at the end. Oh, gosh, I'll just get carried away. You know, I get really excited. And I do feel really at home here. I, 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 just, I was, when I was going to come, and um, thank you, um, Pastor Dan, for inviting me. I've got a big list of thank yous here. I'll try to get through it quickly. But we have a lot of history here. And it was all because of the supernatural leading of the Holy Spirit. It really was. And so I've been talking to different people from the history that connected all of us together and asked, and I'm, I'm, it's just an incredible, so the first teams, so the first fall trip of 1997 is when teams came from St. Luke's to our church because of a man named Steve, Stephen Sharon Bowie. They came to move to our city in May of 95. They were supernaturally led to our city I finally got the whole story recently. They were literally in our city, 100 yards from our apartment a year prior, and felt led to come to our city, but didn't know what they were gonna do, and someone called them from the Toronto Revival and said, there's a guy here in that city that you wanna go to, let's connect him with you. And I mean, this is like supernatural. And, and, and um, you can pray for me, my son and I do wanna finish um, Bill's book. Bill wrote his testimony book. He was three chapters into it before he died. I don't know if you ever heard his testimony. I know Roger and Gretzky have. It's very radical. It was supernatural. His whole life was supernatural. And then I joined him and married him and everything just got more and more supernatural. But this is like a supernatural connection. The team started coming in fall of 97. Lots of teams. And so much has happened since then and I'm telling you, our church was really hurting, and, and really hurting before you guys came. And I'll tell you something else. We were in the height of this huge revival. I was begging people from the US, a lot of pastor friends. I was begging people to come and help us. We were burning out. There was so much work. There was so many people coming to Christ. We're talking explosive revival. It, you know, it's a missionary's dream, but when it happens, you're just, you're just getting killed. It's just so much work. And, you know, no one came but you guys. You guys came. <laughs> and like the words of Mr. Chuck Rankin, you showed up. You guys showed up. And uh, we realized that it was like this injection of love to our body or there. It was an infusion, like an injection of love when you guys came over. And uh, this, our, our pastor, Igor Ivanov, who wrote those beautiful songs, you guys remember Igor, he was here. When the first teams were coming over, and people were apprehensive here about, well, how am I qualified? I'm not really qualified to go do something like that. He said a wise thing. He said, can you love one person? If you can love one person, you're qualified to come over. 
And I'm telling you, the St. Luke people came over, and it was just like an injection. It was like an infusion of love. Just that simple, pure, we care about you, we love you, and all these healings. I'm telling you, they, um, so many, the people were hurting so, so bad there, especially at that time right after the fall of the Soviet Union. And so I have to just recognize and just thank um, Steve and Sharon Bowie, Kathy and Chuck Rankin. They provided a home for us and our family. It was like a home away from home. Um, Roger and Gretzi Ames, Ken and Sylvie Lutke. Um, Sylvia brought the humanitarian aid to the Children's Infection Hospital, which developed into a huge thing later um, after she did that and connected us with that doctor. That doctor, by the way, pray for him, he's in the heat of the first, he's, he's one of those heroes dealing with the, um, the onslaught of the pandemic there. Karen and John Lyle, they came over, started investing in our people and them and the Let, uh, Ken Lucky, they started doing micro business. We have billionaires in our church now. We have super wealthy people in our church now. These kids that were in my Sunday school, 30, 25 years ago. They're, some of them are billionaires. One of them is one of the largest producing businesses in the entire city, produces more tax revenue than any other business in the city. They've got a skyscraper in the middle of the city, this fancy. It's just incredible to see what God has done. That kid that grew up in our Sunday school, we sent over Samaritan purse boxes. I think you guys sent over those Samaritan purse boxes. And uh, that was a great thing. Although when I did come into some of the orphanages with those boxes, we almost had riots. I'm telling you because <laughs> we learned a lot doing those boxes. This is a true story. My uh, Sunday school director, she was over it, and she said this. Uh, they went into this one orphanage. It was such a blessing. But then because the boxes, you didn't know what you were going to get. Well, one girl in the whole crowd got a Barbie, but only one Barbie and one Barbie only for the whole crowd and it just caused like a riot. These kids started fighting. And so we had to, um, when the boxes would come over, the Sunday school director said, we have to actually open them and repackage them and uniform them and make sure they're all uniform. And then if there's things missing, we pay, we pay for them and add stuff. And Oh, it's just wild stuff. Uh, I'll go down, Marilyn Gadotti, Rick Bowser, Rick and Val Bowser. Um, just so much healing and emotional healing. Rick Bowser did some seminars that literally transformed Bill and I's marriage. Were changed forever. I think that was 2000, Five. year 2005. It was 2005. That seminar rescued my marriage. <laughs> one of the one of the things, many things. And um, Connie and Don Arbach, they just loved on the people there. Uh, that Linda Taranchik, Sherry Kelly, Bonnie and Bob Barker. Phil Wagler, John Wagler, Paula Bowie, uh, Herb Carden, he's with the Lord, Chris Unitas, her name was Unitas then, Larry Buell and, uh, Buell and Larry Grindle, uh, the Grindles along with Sylvia, they started the, um, you know, the Akron Pregnancy Services, which is a vital ministry you have here, they started, helped a church, uh, helped the um, Harkov Christian Pregnancy Center. And Lena Botina, the director, all you all keep praying for her. She is right now fighting another cancer, and she's being housed by Kathy Rankin, and Kathy's caring for her, and she's uh, she's actually doing good right now. She's doing good. And um, the Crisis Pregnancy Center that Lena Botina started is just an incredible ministry. There's all kinds of stories with that, and there's just so much. Uh, the Hank and Kim Kaholic. Sharon Stevens brought over these anointed, super anointed Holy Spirit banners. I'm going to find those banners. They're in some kind of storage over there. I'm going to find them. Terrell Gilead helped with a lot of inner healing, a lot of rape victims. Rape is very common in the Soviet Union. The Coleys came over and did a lot of healing and helping people. And Margo Fuller, I got to thank Margo this last June when I moved here. So Bill died January 3rd. <coughs> And then um, I was in Utah till June of 2020. And then I had to move and move Sarah back here to get Sarah settled into services here and programs. And we're in the middle of COVID and I don't have anywhere to live, nowhere to go. And Margot 
Fuller invited us to stay in her house. I mean, how many people invite you to stay in their house and live with them during COVID? Margo, I love you if you're watching this. So there's so many thank yous. Um, and I, uh, and then I just want to move on because there's little time. How much time is there so I can watch it? Okay. So, um, you know, they all say to do these icebreaker things. Well, this is a real icebreaker from one of my husband's sermons years ago. He had an incredible, we're trying to figure out now how we can find out uh, and access dad's old sermons if there's any record of them. We're trying to talk to our guys and our sound men back there. Bill had a series on heaven. We talked about heaven a lot, uh, our whole lives. We've preached a lot about eternity in heaven. But um, he stumbled upon this revelation. He just got a lot of revelation that were bib was biblically sound revelation. He was an incredible biblical expositor. He really trained me. Um, one of the best preachers anywhere on the planet, and I'm being non-biased. One of the most di biggest difficulties living in Afghanistan was since we weren't in a real church setting, I never got to hear my husband preach anymore because he was always one-on-one -on -one with the, the native men. And then, you know, I just waited on them with the coffee and food, but I didn't get to hear his sermons, but I did learn well. So Bill had this amazing heaven series. And this is this joke that the Lord showed him. Let's see if I can do it justice, okay. So this guy gets to the pearly gates and before he when he's dying, the angel Gabriel visits him and says, you know, you're going to go. And he goes, okay. And, uh, and he convinces the angel. He says, you know, there's something I really want to take with me from the earth. I know that we're not allowed, but just please let me take this one thing. I just love this one thing from the earth. And the angel Gabriel goes, well, I guess so. You know, hey, just one little thing you can bring with you. So the guy loved gold. <clears throat> and he had a great big chain of gold. And they allowed him to come back, come into heaven with this big necklace, this big chain of gold. You know, there's cultures that love gold. I don't know if you knew about that. <coughs> this is a true story. In Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Cubans that came to America that immigrated, um, they were allowed, there was this little window up when they were allowed to get out of Cuba and come. You know, they love to wear gold. They, they have a big hunk of gold here. And they have their shirts open, you know, that kind of button down quite a bit in the lapels, the wide lapels. Well, there was a rash of tuberculosis in New York City because all the Cuban immigrants refused to put their scarves on and refused to bundle up in the winter. They were going to show off their gold and their, <laughs> their hairy chest. I don't know what, but that's a true story. So, <laughs> so this guy goes to heaven, and he's got the gold necklace. He's got his big hunk of gold, like the great big one. But when I used to live in St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands, that's where Bill met me. The 24K Garo, 24 Carat Gold Company, they were trying to get me to work for them because I was a really good salesman uh, person back then. So the guy gets to heaven, he's got this big honk of gold just hanging on his neck and he notices after a while he's hanging around that people are looking at him really funny and like whispering and then they go, what in the world is this guy doing with a hunk of asphalt around his chest? <laughs> in heaven, the streets are made of gold. <laughs> gold, is the <laughs> gold is the most inferior thing in heaven. That's what they walk on there. And so it's just a valuable lesson that the things that we hold most prized in our culture, in our world, on this earth, this planet, is the least the least value thing, and I'm telling you, the most valuable thing on the planet today is not stocks, it's not politics, it's souls. The things that are everlasting, the things that are eternal, these are the things worth investing in, and at any level, at any level. Okay, so let's get to the text, because I don't want to get too... Um, okay, so I have this text... I did this, I preached this, um, well, I didn't really preach, but I did share this scripture at Bill's funeral. I wasn't able to fully preach. I wonder why. Um, but I did um, write a song and sing over his casket to give him his farewell. I wrote a special song. It's on my Facebook page if you want to see it. Um, it's, it was... Uh, 
It was great. So let's go to the word now. Father, we just thank you, and we pray that you'd bless your word, bless thy word unto our hearts, glorify your name. In Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians 4. <coughs> I'm going to read it first in Russian. All right. I'm going to make your brain, your brain split into two and let you feel... Let you know what it feels like to be, to be me, to have your brain split in two all the time. I really want to do this. I, wanna, um, I will read this scripture, but I'll do the shortened version in the Russian. Okay, I'll do uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. I'll do the compacted one. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 6 and 7. Okay, let's hear it in Russian, just for fun. Потому что Бог, сказавший истинный, на вас сияет свет, воссиял в наши сердца, озирая и светом познания Божьей славы на лицо Иисуса Христа. Мы же всего лишь голинная сосуда, в которой хранится такое сокровище. Поэтому очевидно, что это безмерная сила исходит от Бога, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. It's really time we take stock in these three words right here in the middle, but we have. We have. Let's take stock in what we have. What have we been given? What is our glorious inheritance? What has God promised? God is not slack concerning his promises as men count slackness. But he is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to eternal life. This is the scripture in 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord gave me when this stuff started hitting, you know, the whole earth. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. He will fulfill his promises. He's not slack, like some people think. You know, a lot of people are just, you know, easy going, oh, yeah, you know, it doesn't happen. It won't ever happen. He's not that way. But he is long-suffering that none would perish but that all would come to eternal life and we are the ones carrying the treasure we carry the treasure jesus has god's entrusted us with something from the very beginning from adam and eve from the very beginning garden he kept trusting and trusting and taking risks and loving and saying here i have all this good stuff for you here take it here, do this, and giving us real instructions what to do with this treasure. And you know, I know once I was asking the Holy Spirit, I was over there in Russia or in Ukraine and all over the planet, and after a while, you know, you're praying for people, you know, and, and you guys have really helped, you guys are really trained in how to pray for this people for em emotional and inner healing. And by the way, I would never have gone back to the mission field if I wasn't here those five years with you. 2005 to 2010, I was totally burned out, destroyed. We bought the house here, Sarah went to school, and I was here with you for those five years, and I got healed up and recovered to go back to the mission field, which breaks all mission statistic odds. I'll, I'll, I, don't, I know all the statistics. It breaks all the statistics. But this, is, this healing, these things that we have this treasure, we have what's in us, from the Holy Spirit. So let's look at what this treasure is. <coughs> I'm not sick. I just I don't know why I got this little funny thing. Oh, so Corinthians 3, chapter 3. There's so much here. I can't read it all. Um, so I'm trying to... Um, Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord... Let's see. Where should we go? Mm-hmm. The Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. 
This is the treasure. The treasure is the glory of the Lord. The treasure is the face. We hold, behold with open face. And it said that the, op, the, um, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And chapter 4, the first verse, they are connected there. It was somebody who split them all up. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. What is this ministry? What is this ministry? This ministry that we have is nothing short of the glory of God by the Holy Spirit from the face of Jesus Christ. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling of the word of God deceitful, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord. We don't preach ourselves. We preach Christ Jesus. Now's the time, I really believe this with all my heart for the church in America, it's time to get back to preaching Jesus Christ. It's time to get back to Jesus, the simple gospel. People need Jesus. They need Jesus Christ. They don't need self-improvement. They don't need home improvement. We know that, you know, uh, Home Depot is going through the roof. Everybody's staying at home. They're all fixing up their houses. That's not all they need is home improvement. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need Jesus Christ. And the church, um, we are going to get back to the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the spirit of liberty, and he's the one that changes us from glory to glory in your presence. The presence of the Lord changes us. So we have this treasure. Okay, so there's another super old song. i got to sing it because everything I say, it always relates to a song. I got it. And um, the first scripture and song see, uh, uh, tape cassettes. 1974. <coughs> 1974. This is before Maranatha music, before the big thing in Southern Cal. I'll never forget these songs. <coughs> For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts, in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. For God, who commanded the light to shine, out of darkness has shined in our hearts. You know, the darkness is intimidating and trying to intimidate us because it's getting so big and strong. But we know that the light in us is stronger than any darkness. Light, any light, the smallest little light, the match, the candle, any light at all dispels darkness. Light overcomes darkness. When we were living high up in Afghanistan, uh, the mountain in our backyard was 17,500 feet. This is, this is big mountains. You know, these are the Hindu Kush. This is the, what killed, uh, the Hindu Kush means the, the Hindu killing mountains because the Hindus couldn't come over and uh, spread their religion over in this part of the world because the mountains would prohibit them from. So the Hindu Kush mountains, we're in the central highlands of the Hindu Kush mountains and our whole city is powered by solar energy. The New Zealand humanitarian aid, uh, the country of New Zealand installed these panels just to the right of my house there up on the hill. And so uh, some of the brightest sunny days, the most sunny days of any place in the whole planet, they did a survey of whether solar was going to be good. So we had great energy, better than cobble. We never had any fluctuations. We didn't have any browns out. Great energy. But on cloudy days, the um, which was very rare. On cloudy days, you didn't have any lights in your house. You just didn't. 
And then they did turn off the energy at a certain time. Usually it was off by 10 p.m. because everybody should be in bed by 10 p.m., right? Because they were all farmers because they woke up early. Sometimes they'd be up late on later, but it was so interesting there. And I wish uh, Dean Cole, Dean Cole, I hope you're watching and listening because we were thinking of Dean a lot. So we're at 8,500 feet living. The mountain behind us is 17.5. So when they shut those lights off, you'd sit on our back porch, the stars, because there was no, there was no, no city lights. It, it was completely pitch black. We're talking remote, no lights anywhere, no electricity. They'd flip that switch and you could see the house up there and you could see when they flipped the switch and that was it. You didn't have any more lights and then, you know, you did other things, kerosene and whatnot, but you sit on the back porch and the stars were so huge and like right on top of you and the constellations and everything. And when you're in deep, deep darkness and someone lights a light, you're just drawn to it. There's this drawing, it's like, ooh, it's a light. It doesn't matter what situation there is. And see, God, you have the treasure and you light the lights and you light the lights everywhere you go. And the, your light is stronger than any darkness that comes against you. Whatever you're facing, and it doesn't matter how difficult, the light of Christ is in you, and you will shine in that situation, and you'll shine brightly. Another thing I just have to say, because this is a prophetic bunch here, and I know you guys believe in this stuff. Years ago, when the teams and everything and that huge revival, you know, Toronto and everything was just cooking all over the planet, the Lord showed me something. And it was, it was subtle, but I never forgot it. And I realize it now that um, it's happening now. And you know that God will always prepare you for what is ahead. He will not let you go through anything that you can't handle. He is equipping you and preparing you. You are equipped and prepared for right now what's happening, and you will be strong through this. And when we were having this incredible outpouring, you know those days when the outpouring in Toronto and everything, Gretzi Ames said this most hilarious thing. She goes, God was moving so strongly in our church. You could go up to somebody, lay hands on them, and say watermelon, and they would fall out. The spirit, it was just, you know, and she was, and it was true. And so we always, all the teams had this joke like, watermelon, 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 you know. Like, I mean, you don't even have to say more, Lord. It's just watermelon, you know. <laughs> It was like God was on the move. And during this incredible flurry of this incredible move, I had this sense, I saw this in the spirit, um, which has really been helping me. I saw, so this was an outpouring over the planet, and I almost cut, kind of visualized it like an outpouring over the planet. And the Holy Spirit showed me there is going to come a day when there's going to be an outpouring of evil and darkness over the whole planet. And I thought, ooh, wow. Just like as this powerful move of God, that there was gonna be an outpouring of evil over the planet. And then the Lord said to me, and you know, he always prepares us and comforts us. He said, but you know, you're gonna be ready because you were here in this outpouring and God is, was tanking up his people to get through the tough times. God always prepares us to get through the tough times. And often we don't even know how he's preparing us. He goes ahead of us and gets us ready. And he takes us by the hand, he leads us. He's the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's the gentle shepherd. J David said, your gentleness has made me great, O Lord. That reminds me of another quick story. I gotta tell this one. Okay, so you just never know how God is going to prepare you this is a true story. Sarah, when we left for the mission field, she was very much, much more handicapped than she was now, as she is now. She couldn't go up steps because of her muscle tone was uneven. <clears throat> she couldn't talk, she couldn't do the toilet skills, all that. So she was in diapers till eight or nine or 10, yeah. In the Soviet Union, there was no such thing as diapers when we arrived in 1992, so I brought over uh, those cloth diapers. Remember those things that the ancients used? The, uh, yeah. And so I brought cloth diapers and rubber pants, and um, <coughs> that was really rough. 
But eventually there did there there was pampers started coming into the oh no wait, that took a long time. So this story, Sarah's eight years old. We're in Kharkov, Ukraine. Somebody says, hey, you guys going to do some, you want to do some containers of food or containers of stuff? We said, eh, I guess so. You know, there's people offering missionaries containers free of charge. You distribute the stuff. You don't know what you're going to get. Some of them were good and some of them were disasters. You just never know what you're going to get. So we signed up and, um, and you don't know when it's coming. So our city got hit with this horrendous, horrendous tragedy. It was the hottest summer in many, many seasons, and a flash flood knocked out the city filtration center and mixed it with city sewage. So it was a city of two million with our entire water system knocked out, no water for two million people. Uh, a Europe, a Euro, Europe came and helped us, some European country. Um, so we had, I don't know, a whole summer with no water, Cities, the city would provide these great big tanker water trucks that come up in the neighborhoods and everybody would go out with their buckets and get their allotted water for the day. I'm telling you, this was bad stuff. Well, if there's any place to get through a crisis well, it's with Ukrainians and, and, uh, and Ukrainians and Russians. They're so used to everything being so horrendously bad, like it's like, well, oh, whatever, you know. <laughs> they don't freak out, you know, they're cracking jokes. Although there was a few fights I heard that broke out on those lines, but... Um, so we're in this crisis with everybody else. And uh, lo and behold, so there's no water to wash Sarah's diapers. And there are no pampers in the entire city. They had yet to even materialize in the Soviet Union. Do you realize a month before that disaster hit our city, we got a container full of stuff. We had no idea what it is. And in the container full of stuff, this is a true story, was an entire garage fill of adult diapers. And the Lord knew my need before I ever knew I had a need before I ever asked. And I'm telling you, this, um, this supernatural stuff is real. This is real. And see, that's why I think uh, we've always loved the St. Luke's folks because you guys love the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I think that's why the Ukrainians loved you because the Ukrainians love the Holy Spirit. They, they really do. They're trying to figure out now some of the historical stuff of the outpouring there, and there's even some sociologists saying that we thought it was happening all over the Soviet Union, but we were incorrect. You know how you think, hey, it's happened to us, it's happened everywhere, you know, sure. And they're starting to call it now the hark of awakening, what took place. So I'm not going to uh, say much more. We have this greater glory. The Holy Spirit's entrusted us with the glory of God, nothing short of the glory of God. He is preparing the bride of Christ. These are going to be some of the greatest, most glorious times for Christians and for the body of Christ. I really do believe those prophetic voices that we are going to have a global revival. And if whatever it takes to get a global revival, God forbid, that it's these terrible things, but often, if you read the book of Revelations, often it is terrible things that bring people to Christ. I did not come to Christ because things were easy. I came to Christ because things were horrible. Those people in the former Soviet Union, they didn't come to Christ because their country was this wonderful, ideological, you know, socialist place that loved them so much. The whole thing collapsed, and, you know, they always do. Those, those types of governments always do collapse. They came because of hardship and difficulty. And the presence of God is with us and will carry us through any hardship, any difficulty. You know, when I lived in Kabul, we had to wear masks because the, the air quality in Kabul is the worst in the, of all cities in the entire world. No, China can be worse sometimes. <laughs> um, 82, so they did the particulates, they studied the air quality in Kabul. So every street in Kabul, now they're starting to do this changes, has open sewage running on every, every street has two sewers, open sewers with open sewer, open, um, yeah, the Russian word for that is khma, khma, it, it, the, it, the stuff, you know, the sewage, raw sewage on both sides. And so um, the extreme heat in the sun dries it up and it becomes particulates in the air. And so the, they did a study, and the particulates in the air in Kabul is 82% human feces. So literally, when you 
and you learn your lesson fast because by the time you get from the airport to wherever you live, and it usually takes an hour because the traffic's so bad, if you're not wearing a mask or tying your, um, we have these real methods on, you know, I'll just, I won't do the scarf thing. I'm so sick of that scarf thing. But you have this whole method of how to wrap your, men and women, if you're not, you'll be barfing. By the time you get to your house, you're barfing. Like Annie and those guys went in in October. Annie and Max are there. I'll tell you, we left 2016, Annie and Max stayed. No, we left 2018, Annie and Max stayed. In one year's time, they have 10 times more converts. The Lord is moving there with Annie and Max. John and Tanya are doing incredible things in Ukraine. Quick news flash on the Ukraine board, Ukraine front. Last year, July 14th, Tanya got a prophetic, saw a prophetic dream vision three years prior when they were in Bethel Reading going to Bible college. And she saw in a dream a flood hit our city of Kharkov and she saw the Holy Spirit falling on the youth, a bunch of youth just getting blasted. And f July 14th of last year, this really happened. They just had their youth camps. We have youth camps every year. All the kids in this in our churches, some of the churches get together and do it together, or they have other unbelievers, they reach out. One of our churches does a whole reach out to unbelieving youth and has big youth camps. July 14th last year, I think the date's correct, the Holy Spirit sovereignly fell on the youth. And they were, they were out in the spirit for hours, getting deliverance from demons, speaking in tongues, totally wiped out in the spirit for hours, totally sovereign. Nobody planned it, nobody asked for it, nobody prayed or wished for it. The Lord just fell on that very day. There was a rainstorm that hit the city of Kharkov, a flash flood like never before in 70 or 100 years, and there were cars floating downtown in Kharkov on that very day. So God is moving. To me, that's a sign. And so we have youth now that are all fired up, going on the streets, talking to kids. And one of the main things the Holy Spirit told me, aside from everything I love to do, the Lord told me, I want you to sing on the streets, Joni. So I got my little mini PA system. I'm ready. And then I was thinking, hey, Lord, I need some workers to work the crowd. You know, I had a girlfriend from, you know, all these years. But now I might have a whole youth team helping me work the crowd. And so um, the Holy Spirit showed me that I should go after this next generation. I had an interesting conversation with a young man a few years back, and he's young. And I was saying, you know, as I'm old, I'm a grandma, I was saying, oh yeah, I remember the city was like this and like this. I'm, I'm talking like 25 years ago, you know. And the kid goes, oh, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> he did not grow up under communism. He did not grow up in the perestroika years. He didn't grow up with all these horrible things. He's like, oh, I don't know anything about that. And so I really feel that the Lord wants to move with this, to touch this next generation of Ukrainians. And to me, it was a real sign that the Holy Spirit fell in that youth group, that God is, dis, dis if that's Russian, God is indeed interested, dis he will do what he says he's going to do. I'm gonna leave you today, you know, the job of an evangelist is not just to preach the gospel, it's to train and equip the body, because we're all to share the gospel. You guys are lights, you're gonna shine. So I asked Jim Fulton, because when I was getting ready to come here today, I was asking the Lord, you know, things are tough right now, this COVID, all this stuff. I mean, give me something for the people, you know, like a word for the, the folks here. And I heard a song, everything for me is melodies and songs. I heard the song. Do you remember years ago, um, the AT&T or the Bell Telephone commercials that were out in the late 60s, 70s? Reach out and touch someone. Remember that? I mean, you never forget that stuff, you know? reach out and touch someone. And I really felt like I should tell you all um, that God wants you to start getting on the phone and call, uh, whether it's calling somebody who's a shut-in elderly person or calling friends, and do not let the enemy isolate us and separate us. And I found this method, I'm gonna be training, um, one of the main goals, I'm gonna be training our churches and other people to do this new method of uh, evangelism and discipleship Bill and I learned in Afghanistan. So here is the video, and this is so simple, so doable. I just wanted to share this with you as I go, and
There you go. You can watch that. This is uh, the Courageous Disciple Maker video on how to do a prayer calendar, and it's the tools to engage the lost. There are people that you know that don't know Jesus. They don't have Jesus yet. You know, don't be, don't be dismayed by the modern jargon, the haves and the have-nots. The only haves and have-nots globally are people who have Jesus or people don't have Jesus. And we are to give Jesus to people. So this is a wonderful tool. I'm learning a lot from these folks of how to engage the people who are lost. And we need to get our tools sharpened up and learn new things. And Bill and I started learning from these guys. It's, it's extremely successful uh, in uh, covert Muslim countries. It's the main form of the, uh, the closed, the church in Iran, this is their main form of how they do church in Iran and other places like that, but India, a lot of places. So I'm gonna leave you with this tool. Check it out. Okay, roll it there, Jim. The most important element in every disciple maker's life is a high commitment to prayer. It starts by becoming a person who prays for others. That's where the prayer calendar comes in. This tool was designed to help you pray for people daily, encourage others, and develop deeper relationships. Here's how it works. Take a piece of paper and number it from 1 to 30. Beside each number, write the name of a Christian friend. Look at what day of the month it is and take five minutes to contact that day's person. If it's the fifth, contact the fifth person on the list. Call or text saying something like, hey, you're on my prayer calendar today. That means I'll be praying for you throughout the day. Is there anything specific you'd like prayer for? Then pray for them on the spot, whether in text or call. Repeat for the next day. If you want to be a disciple maker, develop a life of prayer. With the prayer calendar, you could be praying 150 to 300 minutes every month for 30 people. Before long, you will see the hand of God move at the urging of His children as they pray in obedience to His will. Well, Joni, thank you. Oh, my albums and my new are out there, and so I can put them up too. I was just going to say that. If you want to know uh, exactly what Joni's doing in her ministry and uh, just get an update on what's going on, the newsletters are out there. Uh, her albums are out there out in the, um, in the cafe, so please avail yourself of, of that. Uh, let's stand together, reaffirm our faith in the, the words of the Nicene Creed, and today, we, after that, we're going to do the prayers of the people and focus on world missions. So together we pray. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and on the third day he rose again accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come together to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Um, one of the things I recommend uh, if you're looking for something to take on during Lent is you could just take this creed and uh, meditate on one line uh, a day. Just let the Lord speak to you, you know, 
We believe in one God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I mean, just think about that and spend your time uh, and focus on the Lord. Sometimes we say these words so fast and so rote that we forget the, the massive amount of meaning that's there. So let's pray for, uh, for the people and for the missions around the world. Let us pray to our Lord God for the growth of God's kingdom throughout the world. We pray to you, O God. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ministry of the Holy Church of God uh, to make disciples of all nations, we pray to you, O God. Lord, hear our prayer. For all baptized Christians, that they may discern their vocation and spread the gospel at all times and in all places, we pray to you, O God. For all who have not yet heard or believed in the gospel and those who have the those who may have the opportunity to declare it to them we pray to you O god for all whose ministry it is to respond to human need and suffering and for all who preach the gospel and teach the truth we pray to you O god lord hear our prayer for an increase in evangelism and ministries of mercy in our local community and abroad, that all people may come to know and enjoy your blessings, we pray to you, O God. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater awareness and advocacy on behalf of the persecuted churches, we pray to you, O God. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people driven from their homes by war, violence, and natural disaster, and for the nations who receive them, that you may provide, protect, and care for them, we pray to you, O God. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the hungry, and the oppressed people of the world, and for all who suffer for the sake of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and infirm, for those who minister to them, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and those whose faith is known to you alone, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and power and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Lord. Let's just take a moment and just allow the Lord to just bring up to the surface those things that have separated us from him. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Our offertory sentences are from Scripture. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his court. How merciful the cross 
How powerful the blood How beautiful your arms Open for us Open for us No greater love God's only Son Jesus Jesus No other name Mighty to save Jesus, Jesus. By your wounds we are healed. You have conquered the grave. And in your rising we will rise your name above every name no greater love God's only son Jesus Jesus no other name is mighty to say Jesus Jesus, no greater love, God's only Son, Jesus, Jesus, no other name is so strong to save, Jesus, Jesus, I will carry your name. want to ask Joni, are you still here? Um, after communion, if people want to come and have prayer for just an anointing of that missionary spirit that, you know, I just, I really truly believe there's an impartation 
for, for what God wants to give to us. And whether that's over the phone or by text or by email, God wants to impart to us more of his spirit for reaching the lost and reaching those for the kingdom. And so uh, I would love, Joni, if you just could stand over here uh, and after people have come. So come up for front right away for communion and pray over folks as they receive it. If some of you in the prayer teams see that that's an overwhelming number of people, come on up and, and help Joni just get prayer, get impartation from her and then give it out to everybody else, okay? Uh, it's long been the church's understanding that when circumstances prevent one from receiving Holy Communion in person, it's possible to make an act of spiritual communion, which is a source of grace. Spiritual communion is the ardent desire to receive sac the sacrament at a time or in circumstances when one cannot receive him in sacramental communion. So please join me and those who have joined us virtually in the prayer of spiritual communion. Together we pray. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you with all, above all things, and I desire to possess you with my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself with you, together with all your faithful people gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty, and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who took on our mortal flesh to reveal his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. Bless you. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your son Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Thank you, Lord. the fire that's burning inside my heart oh I'm yearning just to be close to you King of infinite majesty be the center of everything all my heart and affections are yours Jesus, I worship Jesus, this simple offering rises to you. Jesus, awesome Redeemer, lover of my soul. I love on you, Jesus, 
You are the fire that's burning Inside my heart, oh, I'm yearning Just to be close to you King of infinite majesty Be the center of everything All my hope and confections are yours Jesus, I worship Jesus This simple offering rises to you jesus awesome redeemer lover of my soul i love on you jesus i worship jesus this simple offering rises to you. Jesus, awesome redeemer, lover of my soul, I love on you. Communion prayer is a little different today. Uh, it comes out of a Kenyan rite that is constantly focused on world missions. And so uh, we, we end our time of communion with prayer for the world. Are, you, are there any who have not received the bread of life and the cup of salvation? All together we'll say, almost, almost 1.5 billion Muslims, Muslims have, have never, never been, been invited to the Lord's table. table. More, More than, than one billion, billion Hindus have never, have never been, been invited, invited to the Lord's, Lord's table. table. 40, 400, 400 million Buddhists, Buddhists have, never have never been invited, been invited to the Lord's table. table. 300 million, million urban, urban poor, poor have, have never, never been invited to the Lord's table. table. 250 million deaf people, people have never been invited to the Lord's table. 200 million tribal people, people have never been invited to the Lord's table. 180 million Chinese have never been invited to the Lord's table. 20 million Sikhs 
have never, never been, been invited to the Lord's, Lord's table. table. Millions, Millions of Jews have never, never been invited, invited to the Lord's table. table. 7,200 unreached people groups have no church to invite them to the Lord's table. Who will go share the good news that the banquet is prepared for everyone? We will go. By our prayers, our offerings, our lives, we will go. Together, Almighty God, Eternal Father, we have sat at your feet, learned from your word, and eaten from your table. We give you thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out with your blessing to live and witness for you in the power of the Spirit through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works we send to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes we set on the risen Christ. So now be blessed. Be blessed by Jesus whom you've received. Forget not the poor and pray for the sick. Make no peace with anything that would oppress you. And live as those who are sent. We're all sent to reach others with the good news of the gospel. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you today and always. Amen. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray, unveiling why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope. Like wildfire in our very souls, come, the Spirit, come, invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives For your our joy and prize To see the captive hearts release The hurt, the poor, the poor at peace We, we lay down our lives for heaven's cause We are your church We pray revive this earth build your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere Build your kingdom here, we pray. Unleash your kingdom's power, we'll reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church. We are the hope on earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here build your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom 
here we pray. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share the peace and the elbows and the fist bumps and the safe social distancing. <laughs>